I'm a die-hard comic book collector, and I got to work on uh, The Dark Knight Returns. Um, I also got to work on the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie for Marvel. Um, so those were personal highlights for me. Um, but also recently, uh, I started the industry 16 years ago as a runner, thinking I would never be good enough to actually work as an artist. And only last year, I returned to Deneg, where I started as a runner, as a supervisor. So it goes to show you what can happen with uh, time and patience and, and practice. Um, I was doing red button interactive stuff at Disney Channel and I was one of three on the team for that and we made the first kids like you could vote with your remote control and this back in early 2000s so it was quite cutting edge that you could pull together mobile voting and your remote and everything together and it was like X Factor sort of style show um, and you could go behind the scenes through the red button and stuff so it was quite groundbreaking and we won the BAFTA for that and that was that was huge to just step up and take one of those home uh, as a very shiny paperweight so that was brilliant. Some of the greatest moments of my career uh, definitely are in the teams that I've worked in. There's a game called Lola and the Giant which I was really honoured to be uh, named as a BAFTA Breakthrough Brit uh, for my contributions towards uh, where I got to work with this incredibly close-knit team that fiercely cared about the game and I got to put a lot of myself in the concept art and the uh, visual direction for the game. And that sense of community and working towards this incredibly rewarding project is like no other. It's incredibly addictive. So that was a huge career highlight for me, both in terms of what resulted from it and just the act of creating. Standing in front of 10,000 people as a DJ was a highlight going back in the past. Um, my first gold disc was a highlight. Um, and that was with a band called Mystique, went double platinum. Um, winning court cases sometimes and understanding music business contracts. And you sort of get it. OK, I get that. But probably more than anything, the highlights are, I did a, a, I know it sounds silly, but I did a post on my Facebook page and just said, if I talk to you at any point in your career, please just say where and what you're doing in the industry now. And I looked and there were so many comments. And these are people all over the world in the industry. And I just thought I've made a difference. So, hey, what more can you ask? I've met Grandmaster Kaz, who's like the forefather of hip hop, and I've done album covers for Your Old Droog and Michael Parkinson, and I've worked with Pharaoh Monch, and I've been in a No Lay video, and I've designed for Blue Cheese Clothing. I've had like loads of amazing parts of my career and the hip hop side of it that I've really enjoyed. I have worked on a lot of good projects with a lot of good people, and it's been bloody hard work, but uh, Crisis 3 was cracking for its generation, even now it holds its head high. But my favourite one was a game called Warzone 2100, sorry, Warzone 2100, which was a 3D RTS. Uh, at the time when Command and Conquer was still two-dimensional, we had a game that you could fit on the PlayStation 1, the maps got bigger and bigger and bigger, and you kept to keep your base, and occasionally we'd nuke everything and pull the rug out from them, you could design your own units. Uh, it was awesome. If you haven't seen it, Go, go and look it up. It's absolutely cracking. I'm gutted we didn't get to make, make a sequel. It was the best thing I ever worked on, hands down. Uh, oh, I've just been part of a conversation about what the role of a cinematographer is on an independent film. Um, and in that, we talked about some of the things I've done in the past, and one of which was working on Game of Thrones. And I'd done season one in that. And in that, I got to do another... Actually part of or participated in the death of Sean Bean yet again I'd done his death on two other movies once in Lord of the Rings and once in a film called Black Sheep which no one's ever seen um, so they, they were career highlights perhaps uh, perhaps not so I think um, touring in Japan was really cool um, the fans over there are crazy <laughs> getting to tour the world in general um, is just an amazing experience really um, so 2018 December, I got to commentate in front of arena of about 1,500, 2,000 people, uh, in Belgium, um, on behalf of ESL. And then just last year, uh, biggest comic convention outside of Japan was Luca Comics and Games in Italy. I got invited there to commentate, uh, League of Legends inside a desanctified church. That was really weird, but really cool. And, um, yeah, just... Big gigs like that have been really a highlight, but that first one to Canada that kind of sprung on me randomly, pretty cool.
talking in kind of New York just off Times Square was a massive highlight for me uh, actually going on stage talking about accessibility the work that we've done uh, absolute huge highlight because we can not just talk about what we've done we're involving the whole team and actually it isn't just one person doing this you know it's a whole team behind Hex that actually got us to where we are today. So I'd say the biggest career highlight has to be uh, when, when I met the uh, representatives from Criterion at an industry event a few years back uh, and made a really good personal connection there and then uh, lucky enough to find out a couple of months later that I was going to be working on Star Wars and I was a massive Star Wars fan throughout my life that was probably the biggest uh, yeah ex the biggest memorable moment I'd guess it's kind of like realizing that childhood dream I think I'm really lucky in that I found the thing that I want to do for the rest of my life and I love all of the people I've met in in the films that I've made it's taken me around the world and it's really thrilling to show your film to a engaged audience in Australia or to show it on television, show it in a cinema, but then show it on television and get the sort of get reactions. When I made Game of Thrones, The Last Watch, it trended worldwide and people started. I wasn't sure how the film was going to go down and people started sending photos of themselves crying and making memes and that was amazing but also showing Seahorse at Tribeca Film Festival in New York and meeting other trans guys who were thinking about having babies and seeing the film had helped them articulate who they were that's those are really powerful memories that I'll have with me for the rest of my life we've been very lucky in everything everything I think we've had a lot of really good times and and a lot of quite sort of measurable success i think most most recently uh and strikingly when we fought, we headlined alexandra palace in london which was our biggest headline show anywhere by quite a long margin and having ten thousand people in the room who'd specifically come to see you was magic we've played to bigger festival crowds but when every single person is there and you're amongst friends and you're on the same side it's a really amazing feeling it goes all the way back to um, when i first started i was looked after the charlatans in spiral carpets i Signed um, the cast chef Seven Gene, Ian Brown, Busted McFly, etc. I've signed lots of artists in different parts of my in my career over the years. My highlight is when I hear a story of someone uh, successful that you know they they kind of um, found success and uh, success, and I was part of it in a, in a really maybe short uh, um, in a short way but still just be part of someone's success and help them a little bit. That's always a highlight for me. I got a top 10 album uh, January uh, a couple of months ago, which was kind of came out of nowhere, which came at number seven with Easy Life. Um, and won an Enemy Award last uh, two weeks ago. Um, I played Glastonbury, I headlined Rock City. I've had loads of good moments, really. I loved Rush. Rush is probably my favourite film to work on. 1976. Grand Prix, racing cars, I love rigging cars, fantastic fun. Ron Howard, fabulous director, Anthony Dodd Mantle, absolutely fantastic cameraman, absolutely adored that film. Pride and Prejudice, again, a really just a, just a nice film, a nice cast, it was a nice summer, it was a nice script, it did well, it was just a fun experience. Highlights for me, probably all of the amazing shows that I get to go to. I think last year I was at a festival in Budapest and I got to watch the Foo Fighters headline set from side of stage, which was pretty cool. Um, that was a massive highlight. I also, we were in LA for some shows and we did the Warner Brothers tour and I got to sit on the Friends bench, the Friends coffee house table. Like, that was amazing. I was like, Johnny, I was working with Johnny Marr and he was just like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, this is literally the highlight of my career. Nothing to do with music. <laughs> Obviously, it's a great career highlight to see your work in print and up there. So when we're promoting Splendour Festival and I work through Mar walk through Market Square and kind of see all of our artwork up there massively on the council house, like that's quite cool and inspiring. Uh, so that's another career highlight. This is England. Um for me personally was where I kind of matured as an actor where I really got an understanding for the craft um, and it was the first time I got to work with Shane which was amazing, do you know what I mean which was a marvellous experience and I feel very honoured and very lucky that me and Shane have developed not just a friendship but um, an amazing understanding in our collaboration as actor-director, do you know what I mean I feel like we have a 
we have for me personally it's a very special bond and it's a it's a very special relationship we have we kind of we really know how each other we we know what each other's thinking instinctively for each other and, and i've said this many a times but if shane was to ask me to jump off a cliff i'd ask do you want me to run or do you want me to walk? I wouldn't ask what was down there to land on. I just, I'd do it. You know what I mean? I, I trust him implicitly, and he's a he's a wonderful man, and he's an amazing director, and he creates a platform and a playground for for us as actors to be able to, you know, to not to 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 not be afraid to play because with Shane, there's no right way or wrong way. Do you know what I mean? You just find what's true and what's real for that for that particular moment, uh, and that's that. That relationship and that, what I learnt from this is England took me forward. Do you know what I mean? That's kind of the ethos that I go into most of my jobs with now, thankfully, through having that experience with Shane. And then for me, ultimately, uh, you know, the Irishman, to be able to, to work with who I consider icons and, you know, masters of their craft, to be able to work with De Niro and Pacino and Joe Pesci for me was just mind blowing. Do you know what I mean? It really was because I grew up on their films and I studied them as actors. You know, as a, as a young lad growing up in Liverpool, I had pictures on my wall. Ah, uh, when I was when I lived in London as a student. You know what I mean? Of De Niro and Pacino, especially um, the both of those with the great roles that they'd done. So to be able to get the opportunity to work with them was was magnificent. And what I found with them, which was beautiful, was they were so humble. Um, there was not an ounce of ego on set. They, you know, they greeted everyone in the morning, all of the crew, and it was a great way that they conducted themselves, which you know I, I learned from a lot, really. I guess I went out and did a talk in Bilbao at the Association of Illustrators out there, which is really nice. Kind of spent a week in the city and like talking to creatives and stuff, and that was that was really exciting. It's kind of it's really nice to know that you know there's people in other countries outside of the UK that are interested in what you do. Um, but yeah, just worked on some really exciting campaigns in the past. Like, um, you know, we did big campaigns for like HSBC and things like that when I was an illustration agent. And and again, it's just really nice seeing projects that you've spent weeks talking about suddenly, you know, existing in the real world. And you know, you'll be on the tube and you'll see it sort of in front of you on the on the platform and stuff it's really it's really nice well, i think for me like gr growing up um this job didn't exist before mm. and so now it's a thing and so it's it's weird for like there are now people up and coming who want to pursue this as a future career because it wasn't a thing once upon a time it's so so strange to like see like all these up-and-comers like mm -hmm. you know following on from like you know things that we've done and like just like taking their own path is great it's just fascinating to see i was super proud of like all the films we've made both together and with other filmmakers as well yeah. everyone <laughs> there's been a learning curve everyone has been I, I wouldn't go back and change a thing the biggest ones for me were uh, stop eject which we made with the amazing director neil oseman probably the film that really founded triscale pictures and made it what it is today and it was one of the best scripts i've ever read from the first moment i saw it and it did so well it was a long listed for best British short at the BAFTAs in 2015, and I, I was 23 years old, and it just shocked me. It shook me up so much. I couldn't believe it that it had done so well. But I was so proud of it, and it's still. I look at it, and I feel so proud. I've got two Guinness World Records: one for the longest DJ set in history, 84 hours, and um, one which I did last year, uh, DJ on Mount Everest. So I've got the highest altitude. Um, DJ set crazy I wouldn't ever do it again but it was fun so that was a highlight it was a surreal experience because um, Mount Everest and the Himalayas are beautiful um, other other ones uh, I DJ'd in um, the Gorge in Seattle a couple of years ago it was 25,000 people it was um, a natural national uh, natural amph amphitheater with a gorge in the background it was like the Grand Canyon kind of look with a stage so um, that was the one time in my career where I've actually pinched myself to make sure that I wasn't dreaming. Probably the the sort of the first job I got in the industry out of college was um, Wallace and Gromit, and it was such a sort of the first feature film, such an exciting time, and they really were the things that I'd seen when I was growing up that made me want to be an animator. So um, working with Nick on that was uh, was a highlight, um, and then this guy, uh, I've just co-directed the latest feature film Arben so um, it feels like I've come a long way and also 
I love working with Sean. He's very, a very fun character to work with, but loved around the world. So that was a massive honour. The first shot I was, my career was involved with, with was the five and a half minute tracking Dunkirk beach shot in a tournament, which is, you know, starting on a high there, really. Uh, and it took me about three or four years to even come close to doing anything as good as that again. Um, some other favourite films over the years. Uh, Paul with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. That, that project was an absolute riot to work on. It was really, really good fun. Dark Knight Rises as well. Um, you know, I had a full head of hair before that project uh, and that stadium collapse uh, did for my scalp. But the, the pictures look great, great fun in the end. Um, and then, you know, having since I moved over to ILM, uh, obviously it's every kind of sci-fi nerd's dream come true is to get to work on a Star Wars film. So the fact that I've kind of sort of worked on three uh, it's, it's fantastic. I was on set for Rogue One, which was just incredible. That you know, walking out into a disused carpet factory in North London and realizing that you're walking onto the Death Star um, was incredible. And you know, having probably the biggest memory of that though is being on set for the uh, the Darth Vader Nosferatu shadow thing and actually just seeing someone dressed up as the the guy in black. It was just just incredible. Um, and then you know, working on Solo, a Star Wars story as well. Had great fun there, hanging out with Chewbacca every day hanging out on the Millennium Falcon, it's, uh, you know, it's the stuff sort of uh, dreams are made of, really.